All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Beyond Home mod, which is being made by form user GamesLinks. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a whole new star system for you to explore. And in fact, you don't just explore it, as you can probably tell from the location of our space center, well, it's now your home world. Uh, yes, the whole concept of this mod is that the Kerbal Star System has died. The Kerbal Star has basically burned the planets in that system to a cinder and a colony ship left for this new star system and uh, built up this new home world for the Kerbal people. And I love that idea. And what makes it even more fun is we're not just stuck in this new star system. We can, in fact, go back to Kerbal and see the destruction for ourselves. And that is pretty cool. So let's go into the tracking station and have a look at our new homeworld of a road, as well as everything else. Now let's actually zoom out here to show off our new star system. And over there in the distance is Kerbal and whatever remnants are in fact left there. Not all of the planets survived, only some still remain and they are drastically changed. I, I just love that whole idea behind that. But let's start with our new star, which is Destiny, and in fact one of two stars as this is a binary system. We of course do have a Destiny here and Fate right here. And that is wonderful. I always do like a good binary system. And now the first planet in our new home system is Fury. A gorgeous world which is, well, rather quite hot considering its proximity to both stars. And uh, yeah, overall though it does have a s small thin atmosphere to it, though I don't think you'd want to vacation there with the heat. Uh, it is 700 kilometers in size. Overall it's just a gorgeous looking thing with some really nice terrain, some just lakes which I don't, again, I don't think you'd want to swim in because again, heat and a very lovely ring which I always do love on a planet and of course it does have one singular little moon of anger which is quite a bit smaller at only 29 kilometers though still a very very good looking little celestial body of course no atmosphere on this one but some nice craggy mountainous terrain on it for you to land on and as well as of course some nice good smooth areas for some easier landing and I mean come on just look at that beautiful view with the rings and the scorched world there very fun now the next planet we have is Hydrus and this oh this is my favorite planet in this entire pack predominantly because of where we landed a uh, lander right here which um, I'll save as a special little treat as to why we landed there until we actually go to it and show it off because oh my is it awesome and is the entire reason I love this world but overall it is a pretty cool planet it is 245 kilometers in size with an atmosphere quite a thick one in fact you'll actually have to go through a uh, uh, pretty particle rich uh, upper atmosphere before you land which on slower computers those particle effects will probably slow you down a bit as it is quite a thick layer of atmospheric clouds but once you make it through it's well worth it on this planet it is just beautiful and ooh, I actually should mention when you download this mod because you should all these planets are just amazing read the descriptions they are wonderful. A lot of effort was put into why these worlds are what they are. And this one especially with its heavy magnetic strain, which will, uh, you know, explain why I love that area where we landed and how it is how it is. So definitely do read all of these when you download this, because again, you should. It's amazing. Now let's move on to the moon of Hydrus, which is Hydron. It is 23 kilometers in size, no atmosphere, but is pretty beautiful. Again, a very craggy moon like the previous moon we saw, with some nice deep valleys for us to land in. A very awesome texturing on this thing. It is pretty, pretty neat. Now next, we have 
our new home world of Rode. It is 450 kilometers in size, does of course have an atmosphere which supports life, as it is the new Kerbin home world. And we do of course have a multitude of launch sites around the place for you to take advantage of. And all in all, yeah, just a lot of large continents, some good oceans around for you to enjoy and explore. It's a pretty nice planet, a bit barren, but you know, we do have some trees scattered about. Now we do have a number of moons here. The first is Lua, which my favorite moon because it's terraformed. I've got a thing for terraformed moons and this one is awesome. Now again with the cool descriptions, it basically talks about how it uh, was starting to be terraformed. They got partway through the process and then kind of stopped because it was costly. But still has a thin atmosphere, 156 kilometers in size. I love the crater lakes on this thing. Very, very awesome. And just all in all, a very neat moon to enjoy. Now we then have Armstrong, which is a rocky celestial body with only 20 kilometers of radius to it, no atmosphere, and uh, yeah, some nice craggy rocky terrain. Then we have Ash, which is kind of, well, you know, molten. Always fun. 250 kilometers in size, no atmosphere, but some lakes you're probably going to want to avoid, because, you know, lava. Now, the next um, planet that we have is Scathe here, a rocky planet with 400 kilometers of size and no atmosphere to speak of, but I think it's one of the most highly detailed worlds in this mod pack. I just really love how all the terrain is here. Very, very cool looking, well modeled, well textured. All in all, just a neat little planet. And it, of course, has the moon of Skindo, which is my favorite textured planet. Again, in the descriptions, basically, this uh, moon has some interesting mineral deposits which give it its beautiful coloration. Just I love all the variety in colors of this thing. It is just a beautiful, gorgeous little moon at 123 kilometers in size. Now next we have Gateway, the lovely gas giant here with a multitude of different moons and a just uh, wonderful ring. I do always love rings. And it is 10,000 kilometers in size and well, does have an atmosphere. I mean, gas giant, but I don't think you'd want to send your ship in there. That would be bad. Now, uh, the first of its moon is Proxim, a just, oh, uh, look at the, look at the view from that moon. You got the great, beautiful ring, you got the great gas giant. It's 50 kilometers in size, so pretty small, no atmosphere, a just nice rocky world. Now next we have Combe, which is 450 kilometers in size, it does have an atmosphere, but it is a thin one, and again with the fun descriptions, it talks about this band of clouds being caused by the tidal forces of the uh, gas giant there, so it's a permanent band of clouds around the equator, very fun, and it is mostly land, but it is dotted with some large seas and lakes, very, very nice place to go and explore. Now the next moon we have is Eidos, a, a rocky world, 60 kilometers in size, and no atmosphere to speak of, but just a very cool rocky planet. Or moon, rather. I keep calling moons planets for some reason. Oh well, on to the next Ansia, or Ansia, not quite sure how to pronounce that, but another gorgeous moon, 50 kilometers in size, and no atmosphere, and is just wonderful. And then we have a Jade here, which is, uh, yes, the farthest out of the moons here, which uh, is quite far out there, but a very, very nice looking thing. I love this ridge of mountains along here, just all the detailing. A very lovely planet, or moon rather, keep saying that, oh boy, 360 kilometers in size and no atmosphere. Now, next we move on to the originally named Rock. Very, very original name there. It is 500 kilometers in size, so pretty large. No atmosphere to speak of, but it is a pretty just neat looking world. And then we have Vasto, an ice planet, 400 kilometers in size, a very thin atmosphere to it. Not much exposed water, there is a little bit. Overall, it is just an icy world and a very neat looking 
And of course, its moon of Voss, which is 133 kilometers in size with no atmosphere, just a nice other rocky moon. And then we're at Kerbal, the star that has finally burnt itself too bright and fried what is left of this old Kerbal star system. This is all of the planets left, and they are very much changed. Now let's head over here first to Tribute, which apparently was, uh, again, just uh, the descriptions. They had colonized it, it was a thriving world, and then they had to abandon it. Very cool ring around it. The uh, just molten ocean of death facing towards our oh burnt out star there well not quite burnt out but yeah you, you know what i mean and uh yeah just a world completely destroyed it is 70 kilometers in size now and uh yeah barren it it took quite the beating and the next dynasty 650 kilometers in size an atmosphere that is still there but thin once more a remnant of the final home world of the Kerbal system. Oh boy. And uh, yeah, yeah. Got an atmosphere. Not much of one though, not much of one. Now next we have Droz, 178 kilometers in size and no atmosphere present. And I uh, forget what this one wa uh, was, free floating alone. It was generally forgotten by all the civilizations, blah, 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 blah. Survived the devastation, but rocky. Then we have Janus, oh, our gas giant, which isn't so giant anymore. It's lost a lot of its mass and uh, I believe some of its moons. But he has a 5,000 kilometers in a size here. Again, atmosphere, because, you know, gas giant, but eh, still wouldn't go in there. Have Tau, which is the last sort of properly colonizable place in the Kerbal system. It was uh, apparently, according to here, as the final colony ships left for the new system, they scattered seeds on the planet as a sort of, well, final tribute to the system to re be remembered. And uh, yeah, it's really the last habitable place left here, surviving around the gas giant. And then we have Eterna, a now icy moon here, 350 kilometers in size with an atmosphere. We then have Talon, a rocky world with 500 kilometers in size and uh, no atmosphere. And then Lund, oh Lund, 44 kilometers in size, no atmosphere, a dimly colored moon apparently. And then Verna here with a very, very thin atmosphere, 240 kilometers in size overall. And uh, what was this one? Did I really sure the planet indicated it was once completely icy? Ah, yes, yes. And then we have the joke. <laughs> the system berry center. Uh, th this, this is the point that the binary stars orbit around in our new star system. And um, yeah, it looks like that. Don't get near it. It's bad. Your ship goes haywire. <laughs> and yes, that is all the things for Beyond Home. I love this uh, this whole mod. It's great seeing the old Kerbal Star System with different names now. Uh, if you look at the mod page, or I mean, you also probably figured out which planets were which as we were going through them. But on the mod page, you know, it shows you which were which. And there's even a cool video about how they changed over time. Very neat to go and take a look at. But let's go to our super heavy lander, which, of course, as mentioned, is on the beautiful planet of Hydrus. And show you why I love this planet in particular over all of the other new planets. And that is because if it loads, it's taking a little while to load. It's kind of understandable because, well, oh, oh, we're almost there. I hear sound. Floating islands. Remember that whole part about the magnetic strain on this world? It causes floating islands. And those are beautiful. <laughs> I love it. You can actually land on them. I tried. Our lander is there. I tried landing on this one. It didn't go well, but, you know, we we survived. And yes, this world has freaking floating islands for you to land on and explore. And that is just awesome. Now, remember about that large cloud particle air I mentioned? That is... Um, that is this. It's going to be interesting on some lower-end computers to get through with the particle effects, but uh, once you do, 
you get freaking floating islands, and that is just amazing. That's why this is my favorite of the planets. Uh, it, it's just cool having all of these things around the place, and the fact that you can land on them and get out and walk around, and you don't die. I have had problems, though, reloading a game after landing on one. I did land on one successfully earlier in testing. Unfortunately, I then reloaded the save, and kaboom, because, you know game physics. So when I tried landing again, yeah, I didn't quite make it and we're here. So yeah, that is the Beyond Home mod. It is just awesome. A beautiful selection of new planets. I love the whole story behind it with the uh, fact that it's, you know, the original Kerbal system is burnt down and destroyed and this is the remnants of our little green alien civilization starting anew in this new amazing star system with new places to explore and the ability to head back to the burnt out and destroyed Kerbal system. It's just cool. So if you'd like to take a look at this mod for yourself, which I would certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that, my friends, is going to be it for this episode today. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next when hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching and as always, have a good one.